Back in the dim and half-remembered past, 2010 to be exact, someone at work gave me a sourdough starter for something called Herman the German Friendship Cake. The idea, as with any sourdough, is that you draw off a portion to use in baking, then feed the remainder to keep it alive and growing until it's time to draw off some more for the next session of baking. Sadly, I haven't kept the Herman starter going all this time. It's been 13 years. But there is a method to start the starter, or just start the cake from scratch, if, for example, nobody gives you the friendship cake starter. I call it Billy No Mate's Cake. These are the instructions for the original Herman starter. Basically, someone gives you a cup of bubbly goo, thanks friend, which is the live starter. You put it in a cloth covered bowl, stirring every day and feeding a couple of times with a cup each of flour, milk and sugar. The various yeasts and lactobacilli in the starter multiply, then after 10 days you divide it into four portions. One is to make your cake, one is to reserve and feed to continue your own starter culture, and two to give away to friends, complete with a bad photocopy of the instructions. It makes a lovely cake, but if nobody gave you the starter, you can still make it or something very much like it, like this. In a large bowl, combine one cup each of plain flour, sugar and natural live yoghurt, plus half a cup of milk, and one of those five or six gram sachets of instant dried yeast. Mix that into a smooth batter, cover it with a cloth and leave at room temperature for 24 hours. It's important to use a really big bowl for this as it will foam up and expand quite a bit as it develops. Actually, in this video, instead of using the dried yeast, I used a couple of tablespoons of my cider yeast sourdough starter that I made in a previous video. So my cake really is sourdough based, but this recipe will work very well with instant dried yeast to get it going. The next day you should find that the mixture is foamy and might smell like mild cheese or weak beer. Reserve about half a cup of this mixture, that's your starter for the next round, and we'll come back to that later. To the remainder of your mixture, add two cups of plain flour, one cup of caster sugar, two teaspoons of ground cinnamon, two teaspoons of baking powder and half a teaspoon of salt. Two thirds of a cup of vegetable oil or melted butter if you prefer, two eggs, one cup of raisins or other dried fruit, one apple peeled, cored and chopped into small pieces, Beat that all together until it's well and smoothly combined. Obviously it will still be lumpy from the fruit, but make sure there are no dry pockets of flour. Pour the mixture into a lined baking tray. This one is about 30 by 20 centimeters and it's just right for this size of mix. You can cook it in different size tins if you have them, but aim for about two to three centimeters depth for the uncooked batter. The cake is to be topped with about five tablespoons of melted butter and four tablespoons of demerara sugar, that's crunchy brown sugar. You can either add this before baking and the top crust of the cake will be sweet and a little bit sticky and slightly crunchy, or you can quickly take the cake out of the oven five minutes before the end of cooking and add the sugar and butter at that point, in which case it will be more like a crunchy sugary layer on top of the cake. Different, but either way is really nice. Bake at 180 Celsius, 170 fan, for about 30 minutes or until the cake is risen and golden all over and a toothpick inserted into the middle comes out clean. Because there's quite a lot of sugar in this cake, you might find the top crust looks a bit dark when the rest of the cake is fully cooked, but that's normal. Allow it to cool a bit before lifting out the tin, then cool further on a rack. It can be eaten while it's still warm, but it'll be really crumbly and you might need a spoon. Maybe some custard or ice cream. But in my opinion, this cake is at its very best the day after baking. The flavour seems to continue developing and the texture somehow manages to be both light and crumbly and at the same time moist and chewy. It also freezes very well. I like to freeze it in separate slices so I can take one or two out at a time. Okay, so that's Billy No Mate's cake, the sort of instant start your own version of Herman the German friendship cake. And you can start it afresh like that every time. Or you can keep a starter alive. That reserve portion of starter, just keep that in a large cloth covered bowl and feed every three or four days with a cup each of milk, flour and sugar. And 24 hours after the second feeding, you're ready to divide into four, using one portion to make the next cake, one portion to continue your starter and two portions you can give away to your friends. Although you might find some of your friends might prefer if you just bake the cake and give them that. So Billy sort of becomes Herman if you feed him properly. And typically the longer you keep the culture going, the more complex and interesting it becomes in terms of the flavor it brings. Sourdough purists might object to the initial starter using packaged yeast to get it going, but over a fairly short time, the difference between this and a true sourdough started from wild yeasts will become less and less of a difference. One more thing, this recipe is really adaptable. I made another version where, just to try to make it a bit more virtuous, I cut out about a third of the sugar. Substituted a cup of pumpkin seeds for the raisins and swapped out one of the cups of plain flour for wholemeal. And for variation on flavour, I swapped the remaining white sugar with dark brown sugar and added a teaspoon of nutmeg to the mix. 
and this was different and really good. Still plenty sweet, and the pumpkin seeds turn kind of chewy, but still taste really nutty. So that's how you can make a sort of sourdough style cake from a standing start and optionally start off a sourdough type culture that you can keep alive and keep going for your future baking. Let me know in the comments if you're going to give it a try or about adaptation ideas you have for this kind of starter. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.